Hi, my name is Srinath Kalasa. Um, I'm a PhD student in scientific computing at University College London. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about data oriented design with traits in Rust. So the split of the talk is I'm going to be introducing what data oriented design really means, what I mean by it, and how Rust traits kind of enable this. And I'll move on to a practical example um, contrasting directly um, C++ in this case and traditional object oriented programming uh, with Rust, which is kind of an extreme example, but it goes to show how, how much Rust can do for us. So beginning with what data oriented design even is, well, it's a way of organizing your code to enable performance by organizing your data and methods to improve cache locality, ideally reducing cache misses as much as possible, um, and using vectorization, whether, whether or not that's auto vectorized from the compiler or your own manual SIMD stuff. Um, the focus of the paradigm is twofold. Firstly, we want to uh, focus on data layout that reflects the underlying hardware that you're using. So simple data structures that are stored contiguously in memory. So I'm thinking structures of arrays rather than arrays of structs, which is the typical example. This way, the size of all of our types is known to the compiler and we can apply optimizations such as prefetching and things like that. The second focus is on data transformation. We want it to be easy to test and maintain all of our functions and make them as lightweight as possible and essentially keep them stateless. This way, they're amenable, again, for compiler optimizations where possible. So data order into design sort of came out of the game development community, but I think it's a really great fit for most of us as scientific software developers as well. Um, in our case, all of our data structures are often quite simple buffers representing things like matrices or tensors or vectors, and we're applying transformations on these buffers um, representing a given mathematical calculation, which can be parameterized in some way, and seeking a solution. Um, for us as well, procedural programming is often really good enough for most of our use cases. By procedural, I kind of mean functions which aren't tied to a specific object or type, like an object-oriented code, and instead can be considered quite simple. Um, this is kind of in contrast, again, to object-oriented programming, where functions are tied to data and types itself, and the manipulation of state is spread thinly over a series of interconnected objects, which define hierarchies and interfaces for interacting with state. Many of you already know this, and it may even be one of the reasons you moved over to Rust from C++ or something else in the first place. But I think it's really interesting to explicitly contrast what Rust allows us to do in, in comparison to things like C++ and traditional object-oriented approaches. Principally, um, Rust enables us to implement a data-oriented design while still enabling some degree of shared behavior when we have cross-cutting concerns without having to create these artificial objects that encapsulate this specific behavior, even when an object hierarchy doesn't make sense, which is what a lot of object-oriented codes end up doing in practice. Fundamentally, I don't think it should be possible to tune out performance from your implementation in a given language, and it should be expected as a default, um, which can be the case in com complex languages like C++ and others, where the vast variety of approaches can include performance bottlenecks, um, even without a developer realizing. And hopefully this gives you even more of a reason uh, to push back when someone asks you in the future why you're using Rust in the first place. So object-oriented programming, as well as um, traditional software engineering practice over recent decades, has given rise to a bunch of maxims for software development. Um, these are often given when developers are relatively junior, and they're often harmless, especially when they're around code cleanliness and code organization and so on. However, often these maxims do kind of lie in contrast to achieving performance. Um, I've got a few of these from a great talk by Brian Wills available on YouTube, which I can link after the in, in the chat. Um, but going through a few of these where these do affect performance, I think is interesting and kind of lies in contrast with object orientation when we want to do something in a data oriented fashion instead. The first being preferring polymorphism. Here, basically objects define their own behavior and calling code interacts with objects via a specific uh, interface. The second is code shouldn't in general know about objects in tunnels and interfaces should encapsulate all known information about an object um, to a caller. Um, the third is that functions should always do one thing. And if there are sub functions, these should be taken out in order to be testable, um, even if there is no generic use case for these sub functions. And the fourth one is not repeating yourself um, and preferring abstraction where possible. So going through these again, um, I think that polymorphism um, over expected behavior rather than type is a much better reflection of data oriented design. And this is uh, something that traits handle really well as they can be implemented over any type and you can handle multiple traits being implemented on a given type, allowing you to compose relatively complex behavior over very simple types such as structs of arrays. Secondly, I think the internals of objects 
can and should be taken advantage of by developers if they can enable performance, um, especially if the resulting code is still testable and maintainable and easy to decipher. Thirdly, overly small functions, um, especially when behavior is not generalizable, can be kind of avoided and indeed make behavior hard to decipher for readers. Um, I think repeating yourself as well can be taken a bit more generally. Obviously, you don't want to copy and paste code where you're just changing parameters or a template, but repeating some logic for clarity inside of functions, especially if it doesn't affect uh, performance, I think is completely fine. So now moving on to a sort of example, maybe slightly contrived, where I compare a nice clean C++ implementation with a data-oriented approach in Rust using traits. Um, I think I have to stop sharing my screen and reshare the other screen. Or, uh, yeah. Okay, so here on the left, you can see I've got a C++ implementation of something, and on the right, I have a Rust implementation of the same behavior. In C++, I have this abstract class for a shape, and I've got all my nice virtual methods um, for uh, attributes of shapes, as well as something that does some kind of behavior using these attributes here. I'm using the vertices and area to do some kind of calculation. I've got all these nice subclasses um, for squares, rectangles, triangles, and, and so on, interacting by these virtual methods again. And I'm going to be benchmarking um, this specific function, which does this virtual method call to vertices area, which is using some of my attributes. This is following clean code principles. Um, where we've ended up with these nice concrete implementations um, in, uh, in these virtual function calls. And I'm gonna benchmark um, something kind of quite roughly, which calculates the number of CPU cycles or estimates the number of CPU cycles per call to this function when running it tens of thousands of times. We're running the C++ uh, function, I don't know if you can see the result, but basically this, this, this function takes around 56 uh, CPU cycles per calculation. This doesn't sound so bad. Um, and we have this nice V table thing here, which enables us to have a nice safe abstraction over shapes. But let's contrast it with a Rust implementation instead. In Rust, to get the same behavior, I've used um, a couple of traits, um, one for shape properties and one for shape methods. Obviously, we can use a single trait, but I kind of wanted to show how we can compose more complex behavior, not in this case, but in other cases, uh, over the same underlying data type um, out of, of simple trait interfaces. I replaced the classes we've had before with, um, with this enum. And what's, what's the point of this? This can also be done in C++. Well, basically, um, the idea in C++ would be to achieve polymorphism with these different types. You can use case and switch statements or if and else statements to achieve some kind of polymorphic behavior. Um, but the idea of using an enum in this case is that the variants are all going to be of the same size, and the compiler can do pretty well to figure out how to fetch data into memory in an optimal way. Um, in doing this, I've actually violated the clean code principle about not knowing about objects and tunnels as we're using knowledge of what these shapes actually are in order to implement our trait interfaces for them. You can see that here. I've used some knowledge about what a square is, what a rectangle is, and what a triangle is. Um, and now we're going to benchmark a very similar function, um, which is also calculating something to do with the vertices and area. But this time, um, instead of being generic over uh, pointers to these uh, Point a, vector, a, point, a vector of pointers to shapes, which the compiler can't really optimize, so it doesn't really know what size they are, and instead generic over the kind of expected behavior of shapes while retaining um, some of the data-oriented stuff in that like we now know exactly what size all of our variants are. Um, we can do another benchmark with the Rust code. And we see we've gone down to about six uh, CPU cycles per function call. Um, this is like a nearly 10x improvement um, over, over the C++ code, um, but we kind of violated a bunch of clean code principles in order to do this. How we, how we see that a bunch, uh, our code is still readily maintainable and retains some polymorphic behavior um, in that we're now generic over, over the kind of behavior of our functions instead of this actual type. This has a real impact on performance, even in this simple example. And obviously these V table calls, you could say are amortized in much bigger applications where each virtual method could be doing a much heavier calculation but you know, death by a thousand cuts is still death. And despite our code being clean and recommended in the C++ object-oriented style, we needlessly lose performance um, just by our approach, which is the recommended approach. Um, the difference in uh, this specific example is you know, the best part of a decade in terms of hardware advances. So as a final thought, I think I'm coming to time, is that data-oriented design is good. Rust traits enable us to retain some of the benefits of polymorphism over complex behavior as well.